Hey there, uh, welcome back. So today we're going to be learning how to make the adjacent bombs work. So uh, not only are we going to make the adjacent bombs work, but we're also going to learn how to chain two bombs together. So uh, welcome and let's dive right in and get started. All right, so where we left off, um, we are able to make bombs, and those bombs will work for columns and rows. So today we're going to talk about the logic for finding the adjacent pieces. So let's get right started. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start out here in my grid script. So open up your grid script. I'm going to go into distraction-free mode here, and I'm going to make this method down here by match all in row and match all in column. So I'm just going to make a quick little method here. I'm going to call this uh, function find adjacent uh, pieces. And this is going to require both a column and a row to do that. So column row, because we need to know they're adjacent to what x, y coordinate. So what we want to do, let me put in a little pass here. Um, so if we take a look at our board so that we can kind of see what we're dealing with here. So if I want to find all of the pieces that are adjacent to any one piece, say this one right here, I want to find all pieces adjacent to this one. Well, my column is going to be one less equal to and one greater. So I'm going to be going from one less to one greater. I'm going to do the same thing with the row, one less equal to to one greater. I also want to make sure I'm not, like say I want to find the adjacent pieces to this one or this one, I want to make sure I'm not going outside of the, the grid and I'm not looking for any pieces that don't exist. So one less equal to one greater, one less equal to one greater for both the column and the row. So that means I'm going to be using uh, a double for loop, one for loop for the column and one for loop for the row. So um, in my find adjacent pieces method here, I'm going to say four. Now, I don't want to go over everything Instead, I want to just go one less equal to and one greater for the column. So I'm going to say for i in, and I'm going to have it go from, uh, let's do range. I'm going to go from negative 1 to positive 2, which will exclude 2. It's only going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. So one less equal to one greater. And then I'm going to do for j in range negative 1 to 2. Then uh, what I want to do here is I want to say uh, if is in grid, which is that method that we used um, to make sure that things are inside the grid, I want to do uh, column plus i, row plus j. So if it's inside the grid, and if it's negative, that'll be subtracting it. If it's zero, it'll be leaving it alone. Um, I want to say if all pieces column plus i row plus j. Oops. Have to do 2D arrays differently in GD script. Row plus j um, is is not null. Yep, it's not equal to null. Then um, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to make it match. So I'm going to say all pieces uh, column plus i row plus j dot matched is true. Uh, okay, so now what I want to do is call this from uh, when I'm checking for my bomb pieces. So uh, up here near my find matches, I did get bombed pieces. So right now I'm checking to see if it's a column bomb or a row bomb. Now I want to check to see if it's an adjacent bomb. So else if all pieces i j dot is adjacent bomb, then I want to, um, did I call it find all adjacent or get adjacent? I did find adjacent. Find adjacent pieces, and I want to pass in the column and the row, i and j. Uh, okay, cool.
tool. So I'm going to save this and then let's test it out. All right, so now I have to play for a little bit to get a corner piece. These always take me forever to see. I'm not very good at this game, despite the fact that I'm, I've made a couple. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm going to fast forward this until I can find a corner piece. So bear with me. Okay, that took long enough. Now, if I swap these two, there we go. I get an adjacent piece just like I should. Now, I just have to get that into a match, which shouldn't take too long. But again, I'll fast forward through that part. Oh, nope, I don't need to. All right, cool. So if I swap these two, I should see these three, these three, and these three all disappear. So, ha <laughs> ha All right, cool. Uh, let's see what I did wrong. All right. Is in grid. Oh, it expects an argument. Okay. Oh, it expects one argument. Did I use a vector for that one? Man, if I did, I did a good job. Yeah, I did. Good job. All right. So let me fix that. Um, <laughs> where am I? Match. Find adjacent pieces. So is in grid is going to take uh, vector 2, column plus i, row plus j. There we go. So I'm going to save this, and let's replay here. All right, so again, I'm going to fast forward while I'm finding corner pieces here. So uh, bear with me. Okay, so now if I swap these two, I'll get a corner piece. There we go. Now I just have to actually use that corner piece. So hopefully that won't take too long to happen. All right, it's almost happening now. Yeah. And if I could only swap those two, that'd be great. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, bear with me. Okay, so now when I swap these two, I should see these three, these three, and these three. So let's test that. There we go. All right, cool. Now, the other thing that we need to do is make sure that our bombs are chaining. So what I mean by that is if you, let's say you get a column bomb. Let me show you what I mean here. Uh, let's see that you, I don't know, you get a column bomb and you swap it. And in this column, if there's a row, we want to make sure that we're chaining that row. Or if there's an adjacent inside, we want to make sure that we're chaining that. So uh, what we want to do here is add some checks for that. So in our match all in column, uh, I'm going to check to see if the piece isn't null. And then I'm setting it to be matched. I'm also going to add a little check here. I'm going to say if all pieces, actually, yeah, if all pieces column i dot is row bomb, then I'm going to match all in row. Match all in row. And the row I'm going to pass in is i. I'm also going to check to see if it's an adjacent piece or an adjacent bomb. So if all pieces column i dot is adjacent bomb, then I'm going to find adjacent pieces and I'm going to pass in column i. Um, for my row, I'm going to do um, checks for column and adjacent, and then in adjacent, I'll do checks for column and row. So if all pieces i row dot is column bomb, then I'm going to match all in column, and the column I'm going to pass in is i, and then if all pieces I row dot is adjacent bomb match all in 
Oh, no, not match all. Find adjacent pieces. Find adjacent pieces. And I'm going to pass in I row. And then the last two down here for this one. And I'm just going to copy these because I'm lazy. I'm just going to grab this. And then if is in grid, if it's not null, paste that in and indent that and indent that and that again okay and now so that's a row now I need to do column so I'm going to copy this and do, 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 do. and there we go all right so that should make our bombs chain so there we go. We've got um, fully functioning column, row, and adjacent bombs that even chain together. Next, we'll talk about color bombs. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord, where I've been chatting every day. There's a really good community there. The people there are awesome. So yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.